Hello everyone, welcome back to Krita Studios. Today's video is not about a review or something that we generally do. And uh, today's video is about why the speed of posting our reviews is a bit slow and it has been slowed down in the recent past due to some reasons that I'm going to try to list out today. The first one is that I have a day job. So there's a paucity of time. Second reason is that I'm lazy. And the third reason is my OCD with good data, correct data. And since I'm growing out my hair and they're still not as long as Steve, I still have to rely on my components for the data that I use in our reviews. Now, the problem here is since I rely on the components and the software, I have to ensure that the components are not lying to me. And that is what this video is about. I'm going to tell you about two liars and I'm going to introduce, I'm going to intro introduce them to you right now. So these are the ones, Everest Aorus X570S Pro AX and our Ryzen 7 3700X. In our older reviews, we tested our coolers on a Ryzen 7 3700X with a static overclock of 4.2 GHz and it consumed around 123 watts of power. Now since we were starting to test bigger coolers as well, that heat load was simply not enough. So we decided to upgrade. But before we upgraded the processor, we decided to update the motherboard, like you do. So we went with the Aorus X570S Pro AX. As soon as I made the switch, I noticed while testing our next cooler that the power reporting was off and by a decent margin. So that threw our testing off. Now the data we had collected up to this point with the B450 Gaming Plus Max, it went to trash. So that caused somewhat of a problem. Regarding this, I approached AMD and Gigabyte. Now <clears throat> how it went? is for some other video but the answers the reasons they were not satisfactory so i decided to test this stuff myself so first of all let me introduce to you the components since we are testing motherboards we are testing three of them in our pool the ones that we could manage so the rest of the components are going to remain constant ryzen 7 3700x our processor a single stick 8 gig ram a single 128 gb ssd for the os and this poor little graphics card just for the display out. Now, the reason for keeping the componentry a bare minimum was that I wanted to compare the reported power by hardware info by the actual power being drawn from the wall that we calculated using this. It's a watt meter, simple one. You just plug in your power supply, power cord into this, plug it into the wall and it will give you a readout of the power being consumed by your whole system. So when I approached Gigabyte about this, that there was a decent enough gap in the power being reported by both the motherboards. The reason was that since B450 is a very different chipset and the X570S is a very different chipset, they're not comparable and you cannot be taking data like this. All right. So if you checked out our previous video where we did a three cooler shootout, I told you that I procured a 5950X from a friend. With that, I also got an X570 motherboard from him. It was the Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. So we have three motherboards in our test pool. They were the only things that were being switched around and everything else, all the other components remained the same. The CPU cooler was a deep cool AK620, missed out on that. The process was simple. For each motherboard, I installed a new OS, a fresh installation of Windows, and the only things installed were the chipset drivers and the graphics drivers. That is it, no background services, no internet, nothing else, just a plain system with obviously hardware info and Cinebench R23 for our testing. So uh, I'll take you through the actual testing process as well. So we did that in three states, default, everything default by the motherboard. Second one was manual PBO and third one was manual OC. Now we won't need to take a look at the manual OC data and I'll just put up the graphs or I'll just add it in the description, but it is not needed as the point that I'm trying to prove will be proved by the default test and the manual PBO test. We are taking a look at four constraints, average power draw from the wall, average package power reported by hardware info, average Cinebench R23 score and average temperatures in average T dye in degrees Celsius. And these were averaged out from the two runs that we did for each board. Before we dive further into the numbers, consider that all the components are consistent and the bare minimum power consumption possible. And the only thing drawing power 
Cinebench also doesn't rely too much on RAM. So the only thing drawing power from in our system is the processor. So B450 Gaming Plus Max from the wall, average power draw, 122 watts. Tough Gaming X570S Plus Wi-Fi, 125 watts. Aorus X570S Pro AX, 154 watts. With all three boards at their default settings, the Aorus X570S Pro AX is drawing more than 30 watts of power extra. That is the delta over the other two boards. Now, the surprising bit, average package power as reported by Hardware Info, B450 Gaming Plus Max, 87.5 watts. Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi, 88 watts. Similar, Aorus X570S Pro AX, 88 watts. Now, the board is basically telling the processor that it is consuming 88 watts of power, but the numbers from the wall that we took report that the processor is actually consuming more power and the next two metrics that I'm going to tell you about are going to drive my point home. Now, average Cinebench R23 scores for the B450 Gaming Plus Max, 12,350, 12, Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi, 12,360, Aorus X570S Pro AX, 12,800. Now, proportionally, since the power consumption is more, the performance is going to be more and proportionally, the temperature is also going to be higher. The ambient was kept constant for all of this testing and the cooler remained constant as well. Average T-Dye for the B450 Gaming Plus Max, 60 degrees Celsius. Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi, 62 degrees Celsius. And now listen to this, Aorus X570S Pro AX, 70 degrees Celsius. So, despite re reporting a similar power consumption in software, the power consumed, the actual power being consumed is higher on the Aorus X570S Pro AX. Now, before discussing the manual PBO numbers, which will further cement our point, I'm going to try to explain to you how this happens. In case of Ryzen, the processor depends on the motherboard for the telemetry from where it, you know, the voltage, the current and the power consumption numbers. And there's a, there's a particular integer in Ajisa using which the BIOS is uh, constructed by the manufacturers. And that is what the processor uses to actually portray the power consumption, the current and everything else. Now, I am not very familiar with the exact functioning of this, but this is a, a rough idea of how it works. So, manufacturers have the liberty to alter that integer and that would alter the reported numbers by the processor or the motherboard and in turn the software. Now, let us talk about the next test setup which was manual PBO. Now, this is for all three boards. Package power target 720 watts PPT. TDC or thermal design current 420, EDC or electrical design current 480, scalar was set to 1x because anything more than that behaves weird, maximum boost clock override 200 MHz and the power saving features were disabled such as cool and quiet, PCS and I don't know there are a lot of things, we switched them all off in order to have as apples to apples comparison as possible. Now let us talk about the numbers. Average power draw from the wall comes first. B450 Gaming Plus Max, 146 watts. Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi, 147 watts. Aorus X570S Pro AX, 153 watts. Now, if you see, they are more in line. The actual power consumption is more in line and you'll be able to see that through the scores and the, uh, the T-Dye temperatures reported by the software as well. But before that, the surprising bit, again, the reported power. B450 Gaming Plus Max, 108 watts, Tough Gaming X570 plus Wi-Fi, 102 watts, and Aorus X570S Pro AX, 88 watts. Now in the next columns, you are going to see that the scores for all three boards are similar and that is why the power draw from the wall is more or less in the same ballpark. But since the Aorus X570 Pro AX was already boosting the Ryzen without telling it about the added power consumption, by lying to it about the power consumption, the reported power consumption, by making the processor feel like it was still sticking to the default 88 watt power limit, it was still scoring higher. Now, take a look at this. Average Cinebench R23 scores, B450 Gaming Plus Max, 12,750. Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi, 12,745. Aorus X570S Pro AX, 12,760. 
all of them are more or less similar average draw from the wall is more or less similar but the reported one still has a huge discrepancy the board is actually telling the processor despite enabling manual pbo that the processor is still sticking to the 88 watt power limit that is what was happening in the default test but since those are the numbers assigned that is the integer assigned the processor is not able to tell if it is consuming more power and that is why even under pbo it is reporting the same 88 watt power consumption and as you saw from the scores that the performance of all three boards is now more in line with each other the temperature is going to further prove our point b450 gaming plus max 69 degrees celsius that's a good number tough gaming x570 plus wi-fi 70 degrees celsius or as x570s pro ax 69.5 5 degrees celsius now this more or less proves our point that despite the ORS board consuming more power even it is even in its default setting and despite that it is telling the processor that it is actually not consuming that much power the processor is being lied to now there can be a few reasons for that the few theories that i have now since i did not get a concrete answer from either amd or gigabyte maybe if they watch the video now they can enlighten us in the words of the great Dakota Johnson. So if they can tell us how this happens, that would be good. If they don't, there are a few theories that I have now. Again, <clears throat> they are theories because I would have required a broader pool of processors in order to be able to figure this out or to be more confident when I tell you that the case might be that in order to increase the shelf life of the 3000 series processors, they are being boosted right out of the box by the motherboard manufacturers. But then it is dependent on the motherboard manufacturers and I don't see a lot of difference. I mean, I don't know. It's like 400 or 500 more in Cinebench R23. So I don't really know. Now, it should not be a big problem. Neither the temperature. I mean, the temperature would be a problem. If you happen to use a stock cooler for AMD, that might be a problem. You see, a lot of people would want to stick to the default cooler that they get in the box with the Ryzen 7 3700X and for them, the added temperature may be a problem. But then again, for the most part, it may not be a problem. But for us, people like us who rely on these components to tell us the actual numbers or at least as close to home as possible in order to create our testing pool, in order to be able to make more videos for you guys, more comparative videos, it is imperative that we have good data and this does not help. Now, there's another surprising bit. So like I said, in our last video, we tested three coolers and it was done on a 5950X. I just randomly happened to install that processor on this board and guess what? The power reporting discrepancy was gone. It was more or less consistent with the Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. So on the 5000 series, there does not seem to be a problem. Again, I would have needed a broader pool, more 5000 series processors in order to be more confident about this theory of mine but 5950x there were no issues at all so <clears throat> that is more or less it uh, there isn't a big problem with this much boosting even in its default state like i said it is not a big problem but when you rely on your components for data there seems to be some problem now most of my testing which i did with the ryzen 7 3700x for the other coolers it has gone to waste now and i'll have to do that all again so that is a bit of a hassle and it would have been great if I got an answer from them, but I did not. So that is all right. We tested it ourselves. The results are in front of you. So what does this tell you? It was more or less an educational video, which tells you that you cannot always reliably rely on components to tell you the right stuff or software for that matter. So that is it for this video. If you like the content, like, share, subscribe. And if you have something to add to whatever I said, you can <clears throat> sound off in the comments below. And uh, I mean, if you have any questions regarding this, you can put it there and that is more or less it. Bye.